no talking, let the slaughter commence For those who claim king, but look, he's softer than prince If we was talking cars, maybe Joker at best And if so, Heath Ledger, I still lay him the rest Alright, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back It's crazy how emotional I started off this day And how good I feel in this moment won't he do it? Yes, he will. Okay. Ooh. I want to get a haircut next week. Settle down, settle down. I might wait an extra week. Who knows? I don't know. I really just be wanting my lineup, but it does look much neater when it's low. Especially since I can't stay focused and get to the 360 waves that I want so bad. Yeah. You saw it. Lazy ex-partners. And how to make sure they don't bring your energy, your drive, your well-being down, down, down. The first thing is to acknowledge the way that they're going to try to make it seem like what you're doing is nothing. What you're doing is just either nothing or ludicrous when really it's you being official in your grind however you learned it wherever you saw it whenever you acquired it that is who you are and sometimes you could team up with a partner that is so polar opposite of that instead of them stepping up to do more with and like you you end up dropping off doing less of things that you would always do and it's funny because you can be with somebody who works a 10 hour day and that's all they do. You can work a 10 hour day, go to school for four hours, come home and raise a child, do laundry, make dinner, work out for 45 minutes, take the car to be serviced, and they will try to have that same level of tired and what I did. And you just like, really? And it's crazy because some people would think because you do so more and you can be a provider that they can just sit on their butt or take the easy way out of life or just drain, drain, drain. And then you're like, well, we're, you're only doing this and we, why don't we ever do this? And how come you don't ever? Because I'm tired and I ain't got no time and I'm doing all these things because guess what? You ain't got no ethics. You ain't got no work. It's beyond education. It, I mean, so many people got PPP loans and they just snap Nathan with them and going to get in trouble. And then we hear about all of these African-American businesses that started. I look on TikTok and I'd be so happy because come on. It was free money out there to do whatever. And if I had time that I could have stepped away from my wonderful job with its great benefits and, and built that little nest egg and found me a little, you know, I'm, I, I'm looking at homes that I could turn into my drop-in center. I'm looking at buildings that I could turn into my skating center. I know that I could apply for this same PP loan with some help and, and really, uh, you know, birth that. But I wanted to birth it, birth it, and build it, build it. I see people who started daycares in their garage and, you know, really, really utilize that money. But it's so funny because if they don't have somebody grinding that hard with them, then all it's going to be is acquired debt. And I'd be, damn, if you come into my life where you got that money and it did nothing with it, but on unnecessary trips and no investments, I'm not going to be there with you to help repay that debt. I got my own student loan debt. And when I uh, profit my invention and profit my drop-in center and start my um, rehabilitation skating rink, trust me, I'm going to make sure there's more assets than debt. But we look at Jay-Z and Beyonce, Will and Jada. When, Will, when Jada found out Will was rich, did she stop working? When Will found out Jada was rich, did he stop working? Because Jay-Z had millions, did Beyonce go soft? Because Beyonce blew up, did Jay-Z fall off? We admire these couples. We say we want to be these couples, 
But then we end up with mates and partners who you regress instead of build. And then there's people who we know together just for, for the business. I don't really want that either, but I can't be in another situation. And it's sad because, you know, I had this conversation with my son. When you're a masculine identifying woman like myself, educated, making good money, financial, financially stable, because I got the heck out of living somewhere where somebody wanted to be, where they struggling and everybody around them struggling, but you want me to stay there and struggle too. But yeah, we supposed to be talking about building the future. Then it's like, really? Mm -hmm. I've made more progress than I care to admit because not everybody's happy to see you succeed. But, you know, I'm going places and doing things. And I was today old. Or was it last night? I don't know the look. Anyway, I actually saw two different models of RVs with bathtubs. That could change the trajectory. That could change the trajectory. I still... I'm all about my tiny house, though. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, either way it go, each goal I accomplish is getting me so much closer to the financial freedom, the debt free, the, you know, the ability to move and shake. It's things that uh, I'm doing, you know, in pieces because I'm also trying to live a dream. Like, I don't want to, like, put all my energy and all my finances into fixing my credit and, you know, building my uh, financial assets up and then I have a heart attack and die. I'm fighting some serious health issues and I'm waiting on some tests and some results. And so I've been trying to live. Like I went to Vegas alone for my birthday. Like I'm going to go to Cabo Salon for New Year's. Like I don't want to die or I don't want to fall ill or handicapped or nothing. And have done nothing in my life that I've wanted to do so bad that I've always waited for the perfect mate, you know. And then when I felt like I had the perfect mate, it was the worst finances. And it was just like, you know, no, this ain't it either. So I want to do the cruise next year. I want to do Dubai. I want to do things that I want to do while I'm still physically able. And I'm tired of putting them off and putting them off. So... On one hand, I'm doing what I have to do to keep my finances together and fixing my credit and so that I can get my home and I can be able to move west when my godmother is no longer with me, but I'm not rushing her. She will be 96 this year, and I love that woman to pieces. So I got a great job. It's my dream job. I love it. I've turned out opportunities to be uh, a director. Um, a center director, uh, start my own thing, help a friend with her team uh, center. Several opportunities, but the benefits, coupled with the income, coupled with the ability to do my job and be effective with someone else dealing with all that overhead, it's keeping me right where I am. And that will probably be the case uh, unless God see different until I get ready to head west. But two is always better than one, no matter how rich you are, even if y'all hustle together. And that's what I would love to do with my mate. Build a business, build a brand, hustle together. Don't be used, don't be abused just because you're a provider. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what else you want to hear me talk about. Let me know how you like that new intro, too. I love it. Thank you, Jejan Malik. Namaste. Did you get ready in the dark or something? Because you look like a beautiful nightmare.